Collider Movie Talk, Movie Talk to Movie Fans. I'm your host, Natasha Martinez, and this is The Daily Show, where we give you all the latest news in the world of movies, plus some insight into what it all means. Joining us today is Christian Harlock. Welcome back to Collider Movie Talk. What an epic show we have today. All the stories, but the band is back together. It is going to be a lot of fun. Also joining us, Dennis Zen. Yeah, it's a pretty packed house here. I got the, I got the wonky chair here and the wonky microphone. <laughs> also joining us, John Schnepp. I don't have the wonky chair, nor do I have the wonky microphone. Hi. And rounding off this full panel, welcome back, John Campia. Finally! <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been looking. I'm a big fan of the show, guys. Looking forward to being here. Yeah, do, you, do you know how the show yeah, you know runs? Works. I'm, I'm hoping I can pick up on how things go as the show starts it, rolling. It's pretty yes. fast paced. Do me uh, a favor. Yeah. Do not spill anything on my laptop. You'll never come back oh, in this show. Man. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, before we get into all the topics, look, both Schnepp and John are here. They have very exciting stuff happening right now. I want to talk to them about that. John, what the hell is going on since you left Movie Talk? I lost my virginity. Nice, congratulations. Uh, no, hey. actually, yes. So, so as many of you know, uh, I've been working with uh, Lionsgate and Comic-Con. Uh, it's a, a complex project as well. Working on this new show for the brand new channel, Comic-Con HQ. John Schnepp is working with me. We're really stoked. We shoot our first episode tomorrow. Yep. Uh, like bright and early Hell in the morning, yeah. like seven thirty. Super gonna... early. What's up with this early thing? That's why. <laughs> we haven't actually even talked. We haven't had an official. Our official first meeting is later this afternoon. That's my first thing. Why so early? <laughs> and you know what? I, we haven't even announced the title of the show right. yet. But I'm, I'm, I'm. It's tomorrow. So yeah. I, I'm going to tell you the name of the new show is Film HQ. It's a, it's a weekly movie magazine style show. We're super stoked about it. Very excited. If you have not signed up for your free. Uh, trial run of the new Comic Con HQ. Go on over to the website and do that now. Schnepp's going to be there. I'm going to be there. There's going to be some other faces there. Some you know, some you don't know, but we're really, really pumped about it. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of how, I know you said it's, it's magazine style, but can you tell us a little bit of what they can expect to see as far as format? Or you want to hold off until. I think we're going to hold okay. off and let everybody kind of experience sure, it for the sure, first time. Sure. But basically what we do is we thought, what would Christian Harloff do? Right. And, do <laughs> and the then opposite. we do the God, opposite sense. <laughs> I got it, I got whatever it. that is. <laughs> and we think we got a good formula. The funny thing is people think like, oh, you left. We haven't seen you. We see you every day. I You're know. like here. <laughs> the here. office is in here. We see you all the time. It's yeah. true. It's it's still my home here, and it's it's been great. And um, we're really looking forward to starting this next chapter. All right. Well, let's start the next chapter by talking about some movie news. Natasha's going to read some of the stories in the world of movie news, and we're going to talk about it. What do you got first? The first image of the new Power Rangers reboot costumes have been released by Entertainment Weekly, giving fans their first glimpse at the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers look after their heroic transformation. Per Entertainment Weekly, the costumes are described as translucent extraterrestrial armor that crystallizes around their bodies. Project Almanac director Dean Israelite explains that the suit design is an extension of the character theme, saying... The show was about kids coming of age, about metamorphosis. These suits needed to feel like they were catalyzed by these kids and their energy, their spirit. Fans will be able to see these suits in action when Power Rangers opens in theaters on March 24th, 2017. John, what are your thoughts on the new suits from Power Rangers? Unfortunately, our information is a little bit out of date. Lionsgate has put out a new synopsis of uh, Power Rangers, and it reads as this. Uh, when an alien invasion threatens the Earth, a group of local high school students seek the help of industrial billionaire Tony Stark <laughs> to build them battle armor to go fight that's what it is <laughs> these are iron man outfits they even put light reflections in their chest to make it look like iron man yeah. battle outfits these look stupid <laughs> all right however however let me say this as the guy who's kind of always thought the idea of a power rangers movie today is a bad idea let me say this do they look dumb i think they kind of look dumb but we're seeing them out of context maybe in context they work great, and because what would you, what do we want them to do? Do we want them to go back and make the spandex outfits again? No. So maybe once we see them in context, it'll work for us. But even if it doesn't, let's always keep this in mind. We all thought Quicksilver looked stupid in X Men: Days of Future Past. We all saw the look. We all thought the look was stupid, and he ended up being one of the best parts of that movie. So maybe when we see these in context, we'll really like them. And even if we don't. Who cares? They still might work, and I think we just need to keep an open mind about them. I have an open mind about it because I think they look fine. Uh, I, I the, the thing is, I, I'm not a Power Rangers guy. I never have been, but I, as far as what it is doing for the property, for fans, I think it you have to update them a little bit. It's almost what they did for X-Men, for sure. 
<laughs> and I think that by doing this, it, it just, it does, it plays into the mythology of what they were. You got to update them a little bit too. You can't go as cheesy as the ones in the early 90s, wherever it was too. But now these particular suits, I think this is, this is going to get fans excited. Is it going to get people who are not fans of the property excited? No. Do they look a little Iron Man ishy? Sure. But I, I don't dig it. I mean, I don't mind it. What do you think, Dennis? Yeah, surprisingly, I have to admit, I, I'm with you, Christian. It's look. I'm not super excited for Power Rangers. It was kind of past my time. I'm like Voltron guy, but Power Rangers came out after me. But I, this is what I can say about the suits. They look as good as they could possibly be considering what they have to, they still have to look like the old ones, right? Are they mm. Iron Man design looking? Yes, but that's kind of what's in right now, yeah. right? That's the trend, so they're gonna do that. I, I think for what they have to do, uh, I think they did a good job with it. I, I wonder how much, because, there's not a lot of stars in this one, right? At least as far as the Power Rangers are concerned. Uh, Elizabeth Banks, Banks plays the, the yeah, 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 she plays the villain. Yeah. I hope they keep their helmets on a lot because you know if you watch mo a lot of movies, right? If they have a big star, their helmet always gets knocked off, and because they, they want to see the star's face. I, I mean, one example of that is a uh, Last Samurai. Remember yeah. Tom Cruise at the end battle. There's no reason why he's not wearing the big samurai helmet, <laughs> except the fact that he's it, Tom Cruise. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. These aren't really huge stars, so I hope they keep their motorcycle-looking helmets on the whole time. You know who did it well, and I thought did, and it served the character, was Dread. Yeah, when yeah. Carl oh, Urban yes. did it. I yeah. mean, Stallone obviously did not, yeah. but Dread uh, for Carl Urban, so maybe they, they follow that page. What do you think, Shrimp? Uh, I don't hate him. I'm not a Power Rangers fan, and when I saw the pictures first, they looked, yeah, like Iron Man meets G.I. Joe, but it, I agree with Dennis. They're, you know, they have to do something. They can't chuck them back in the spandex, so... You know, the only thing that still bugs me, I guess, is because, like I said, I didn't watch the show, is the stupid little mouths. They look like little gray alien mouths mm. on all of the suits. Emo mouths. Yeah, it's just, yeah. And they probably don't talk. They're just like, you know. So I, they're going to have to keep those helmets on because all the stunt people come in and then start doing all the crazy jumps and stuff. So that makes sense. I mean, I'm going to see Power Rangers probably. I don't know now. I mean, you know, seeing the suits, I was like, it doesn't look bad. I mean, but you're right. It depends on the context, how are they introduced, all of this stuff. So, And yeah. I think we'll all agree, too. Like, to what you were saying, Dennis, is that no matter what they did with the, the design yeah. of the Power Rangers, no matter what they did, if they came out with the classic spandex, there were going to be, be people that didn't like it. You go totally modern, there are going to be people who don't like it. There's, there's, there was a no-win situation for designing it, right. so we're all just going to have to bide our time and wait to see how it actually looks on screen and how it plays out. Well, like, I'm very curious to see what you guys are saying out there, too, because if you are fans, if you are hardcore fans of Power Rangers, because ever since we started talking about this movie, I think back in the AMC days, there was people who are the hardcore fans that are very excited for this movie what do the hardcore fans think of the costume very curious to see what you guys think make sure you tweet it at us make sure you put it in the live comments all right natasha what's next deadline is reporting that russell crowe is joining the growing legion of a-list stars taking part in universal pictures shared universe of monster movies the gladiator star is in early talks to play a role deadline calls jekyll like opposite tom cruise in the mummy the trade says it is unclear whether this could lead to a future spinoff or not. Alex, Alex Kurtzman is directing the John Spites written script, with Chris Morgan overseeing the whole Monsters universe with Kurtzman at Universal. Christian, what do you think of Russell Crowe joining Tom Cruise in The Mummy? Awesome. I mean, go for it, man. If you're going to go for this universe and you want people to really care about this universe, go for the talent. For right now, I mean, yes, Wolfman and Mummy and those guys could sell themselves, sure, but why not go out and get guys like Tom Cruise and Russell Crowe mm -hmm. if you want to start a shared universe and if you want to spin off to Jekyll and Hyde? Because look, Russell Crowe throughout his personal life, I guess, <laughs> is Jekyll and Hyde. You know, just don't give the guy a phone. So it's <laughs> it's a matter of putting this in this type of guy, this type of talent in this movie who doesn't want to see Russell Crowe and, and Tom, Crow, Tom Cruise together in a particular movie? So I think this is a great idea. It makes a lot of sense as far as spinning it off. Yes, if this delivers on the Jekyll and Hyde in this in this particular movie, I would love to see him stand alone because he's got that kind of gravitas. Even Saturday Night Live, which is a sinking ship right now, he was on, and every time he was on, just even if it was badly written, the guy just brings something to everything he does. He could do like, you know, it could be a Skittles commercial and you're going to watch it. So, Schnapp. What do you think? Uh, I, when I heard this news, I suddenly got a little bit more excited about the entire idea about the Universal Monsters franchise because that they're going to have another monster kind of guest star in the Mummy, being a, a la you know Jekyll and Hyde. Uh, 
I just started thinking, oh, wow, wouldn't that be cool as, as they keep making these other movies, they kind of just like Marvel throw different monsters or different kind of guest stars in there to ultimately have a universal monsters movie that has all of the monsters right. in it. I, and I think that, you know, when I thought about it yesterday, we were talking about the unreleased uh, or the unnamed universal monsters movies. And we know Johnny Depp's playing the invisible man. They're going to keep ratcheting it up. We don't know if it's going to be Angelina Jolie is the bride or is Scarlett Johansson going to be in the cre the creature, you know, who's going to play the wolf man. We know it's not Benicio del Toro, uh, you know, so, but like adding Russell Crowe, adding that kind of talent just made me think more like more seriously about how are they going to make this, uh, the architecture work for all these other films? That's a great point, though, too, because you think getting a guy like Russell Crowe and Tom Cruise, it attracts more big names, mm -hmm. too, as it furthers along. Dennis, you hear this news that Russell Crowe is joining. What, what do you think? I'm impressed because remember when they first announced the shared universe? We all kind of laughed yeah. because it came out around that time that Dracula movie came out with Luke Evans. And, no, you know, I like Luke Evans a lot, but right, he's not that top tier star right. that a Tom Cruise, a Russell Crowe or or a Johnny Depp are. And so now like we've all kind of shifted our our perception of the shared universe because before we we're kind of laughing, oh whatever. Now it's like, oh, they're going for it. They're taking it very seriously and and with this these type of castings, we we have to actually take note. Yeah, John. Look, when you kind of mentioned the point, when the news first came out about this, we were all we all giggled. We did. The, the Universal doing the shared monster universe. We all giggled. But then Universal shot this giant fla flare in the air and they served notice. We are taking this damn seriously when they went out and they got Tom Cruise and they got Johnny Depp. And now they get this. Now, you mentioned you get that kind of talent. Let's turn that into a sports analogy. You know, nobody wanted to go play on the Cleveland right. Cavaliers. They got LeBron back. And now all of a sudden, all the <laughs> right. free agents want to go there. And I think that's what you're seeing. I am really impressed so far with what limited stuff we have seen Universal do and how they are treating this whole franchise. Mm -hmm. They're not just going for big names. They are going for the talent. Because Johnny Depp is not just a big name. When he's on his A game, he's one of the best there is. Tom Cruise is not just a big action star. When he's on his A game, he's one of the great actors out there. And I still contend, I still think Russell Crowe is one of the top two or three actors in the business today. This dude can convince you he is anything when he's actually playing around. I cannot wait to see the nice guys. So overall, love this. I'm a little bit curious by, by the term in the report that says Jekyll-like. Because right. like at mm. first, I, I just thought Jekyll and Hyde. Oh mm. my God, if he's actually right. Dr. Jekyll, this could be awesome. You can spin him off, be part of the cinematic universe. What do they mean by Jekyll-like? I'm curious. But overall, you have to consider this great news for their franchise. Yeah. And do you think they're testing the waters in terms of, let's throw him in this this mummy movie and see if the character is well-received so we can do a spin-off. Also, probably. they probably want to see how well the mummy does. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the main thing. This is, this is their Iron Man. because It's their launch. It is. This is the one that's, even though Dracula and like we said, that they, they kind yeah. of retcon <laughs> yeah, that yeah, thing. Yeah. I'm also interested. I mean, we've already got a kind of a faux Universal monsters on television. It's called Penny Dreadful. It's right. got all of the monsters, you know, the public domain monsters, which is basically all of these monsters in a series, kind of like either against each other or working together. So I'm interested to see: Will the Mummy be present day? Will Frankenstein be present day? Will the Invisible Man be present day? I don't think they're going to go back to no, them. I no, think they I said know. they are. Yeah. I think it's they all present, present day. day. Present so day. Yeah. I'm really, it makes me more excited to see that. Yeah, me too, because it's with what they can do with the, today's technology, and I don't mean just as far as CGI goes. I mean as far as inside of the movie, like right. how they're yeah. going to play the present day. So very interesting, and I think this was a, a really good move. All right, Natasha, what's next? 20th Century Fox is preparing to dig deeper into their X-Men universe with writer-director Josh Boone's upcoming superhero film, X-Men The New Mutants. The core team was created by Chris Claremont and artist Bob McCloud in the 80s, with mutant names unfamiliar to the general movie-going audience, but very similar to the diehard fans. Taking to his Instagram account yesterday, Boone revealed the lineup of new mutants we can expect to see that include Magic, Wolfsbane, Mirage, Cannonball, Sunspot, and Warlock. Boone recently recently turned in a new draft of the script, but a release date or green light has yet to be announced. Dennis, what do you think of the New Mutants lineup that Josh Boones is teasing? I like it. It's mostly the original lineup. I ho Hopefully uh, with the Mirage, the Native American uh, mutant character, they can get Rooney Mara to, to, mm. to star <laughs> in that role. Uh, you know, yeah. she fits. Um, hopefully, uh, the one interesting thing is the Sunspot one, because we've already seen yes. him Days of Future Past, and when Simon Kinberg talked about this movie, they were talking about a young adult vibe, and they're going to get younger people. Sunspot in, in Days of Future Past, 
he's kind of like an older guy and it's also set in the future i think this is supposed to be set uh at least in the 80s or 90s Wait a minute, are you saying that Fox might become inconsistent yes. with their X-Men characters in the movies? Blasphemy. What? Yeah, yeah so he hashtagged the, the actor's name. So are, are they actually going to use that actor in the same role? But I don't know. I, I just don't get that one. And then there's those rumors of Maisie Williams, Arya Stark on Game of Thrones playing Wolfsbane. And I'm all for that. It's a, uh, honestly, it's a different... Uh, I think they got the name wrong. It's, mm -hmm. it's not... Uh, you're thinking Sunfire. Oh. Sun, Sunfire was in X Men: Days of Future Past. Sunspot is New Mutants. Ah. So I know it's the Sun, but it's a different character. So I think Sunspot. If you guys can correct us if I'm wrong, I believe he's Puerto Rican and he has this kind of like negative man, like weird, like you know, he turns like just like this like negative weirdo powers. And Sunfire has the power of flames and stuff like that. Do you so, like the, the, this? Well, I right? love it. I think it's it sounds fantastic. I, you know, the New Mutants when that came out was I was in uh, high school and I loved every single one of these issues <clears throat> most of them were bill sankevich i really hope that it sounds like boone is like taking a lot of uh, story elements from that original run especially the ones with bill sankevich because he created warlock that weird biotechnical creature i want to see magic with her little dragon lockheed any of the nerds out there know about this it's a great magical series. It's different than X-Men. It has a totally different vibe. So I'm really looking forward to the new mutants, not only because it's in the X-Men world, but it's very, very different in a special way, I think. so. Uh, fans are saying that you're right. So it was Sunspot. Right. And Dave uh, okay, John, so you hear this news. First of all, I want to obviously get your thoughts on this, but does it, how is, do you think it's going to connect into the overall mm -hmm. X-Men universe as well, too? Yeah, look, we, we've joked around about a lot that Fox, even though they've made some magnificent X-Men films, X-Men 1, X-Men 2, First Class, Days of Future Past, so there is a, a seems to be a motto at Fox, continuity, schmontinuity. And they, they really have, they seem to retcon every single new movie. Uh, they change, they swap characters out. This guy's Colossus. No, now this is Colossus. This guy's Sabretooth. No, now this guy's Sabretooth. So, I mean, how they're going to tie it in is almost anybody's guess. Are they even going to bother to try to tie it in? I mean, I just don't know the way Fox has been doing it so far. Look, I've always loved Wolf Spain. I thought she was great. And look, I always thought for a while during those or the early run, I always kind of felt like Cannonball was almost being set up to be the new Scott Summers in mm. a way. You know, that he was going to be that right. future leader kind of type. And maybe in their movie universe, they can try to make up for the fact that they so mishandled Scott Summers in their movie universe, even in the great movies. They've just never done uh, Cyclops justice. So I'm really curious about this. We're starting to see now that these companies can start rolling the dice on the lesser known characters because now they've built so much brand awareness that maybe something like this can work and I really hope it does. Uh, apparently I was wrong. They're saying that Dennis was right and that Schnepp, uh, that I was, I guess I was not listening. They, uh, Schnepp, uh, Sunspot was not in Days of Future Past. No, I never said Sunspot. Was. I don't I know what the hell said Sunfire, Sunfire. was Days, Days of Future Past. Whatever. Um, okay, so for me, I'm gonna talk, I'm, I think that going off of what you're saying with X-Men, I think that they have to be conscious of the continuity this time around because of what has happened with Deadpool and now X-Men Universe. Because when they've switched things up in the past, everything was kind of a mess. Mm -hmm. Like the, the entire kind of, they were just trying to figure its way because it lost its way for a very long time. And then first class got it, got us back into X-Men and led us into Dates of Future Past and now into Apocalypse. And then Deadpool hit, that was able to tie in. Now they're gonna, they kind of scrap back um, Gambit. So I think that they are very conscious of their continuity, and I think they should play this into it because if they have a franchise that could work and these characters could work, I think they should too. Yeah, mm -hmm. then why not? So, um, okay, now it's time for buy or sell. Natasha's going to read some more stuff happening in the world of movie news, and myself, Dennis, Campia, and Schnapp will simply buy or sell it. Natasha, what's up first? According to The Hollywood Reporter, Andrew Garfield is attached to star in Under the Silver Lake, a crime thriller written and to be directed by David Robert Mitchell, the filmmaker behind the highly acclaimed horror movie It Follows. Details are being kept under wraps, with the only information available about the project described as a modern-day noir crime thriller set in Los Angeles. Production is aiming to begin at the end of the summer with the social network's Michael DeLuca producing. No release date has been set. Schnepp, buy or sell a new movie with Andrew Garfield, directed by David Robert Mitchell. I'll buy it. I think uh, Andrew Garfield's a great talent. He's a great actor, and I loved It Follows. If you haven't got a chance to see this really original, unique horror film, I would check it out. It's a lot of fun, and it's very creepy. Um, so yeah, I fully buy it. 
I buy it as well as long as Sunface is in it. Um, <laughs> I, they're really man. God, God forbid you don't get Sunspot right. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I, I think that this is a great, great pairing because I'm not a big horror guy. And I loved It Follows. I thought mm -hmm. it was a nice throwback. And I thought that it really had to do with the director and the way that he paced it. It mm -hmm. was a clear homage to that the 80s, low budget horror film, and it worked well. And when you add someone in there like Andrew Garfield, this sounds great. I want to see it. It's like following these budding careers. Um, so yeah, I'm on board. Big buy for me, John. Huge buy for yeah. me. I, I Look, for a long time, I think Andrew Garfield is a tragically underappreciated talent in this business. Mm -hmm. I thought he was the heartbeat of the social network. I thought any of the problems that there were with The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Andrew Garfield wasn't one of them. Right. I thought he was great in that, and I think people are really gonna wake up and realize what they have and what we have as film fans in this guy when he's in that Martin Scorsese film, Silence. Mm. When he's in that, I think a lot of people are gonna wake up to who and what this dude is all about, and he's gonna be around for a long time. So I think you, know, you pair this director up, this sounds like a nice little project for both of them. I think they're gonna work well together, big buy. Dennis? I'm gonna buy it as well. Andrew Garfield's a talented actor, and he's made some interesting choices since leaving the, the yeah. Spider-Man franchise. Yeah. You have, he did 99 Homes mm -hmm. last year. Which was great. Which yeah. really yeah. good. He's, yeah. really good he's, he's gonna be in silence, like you said. And then also, for me, crime drama is my favorite genre. And so he's gonna do a modern day version of it. It says under the Silver Lake. Is it gonna be set in Silver yes, Lake? Yes, it is. It's LA based, okay. yeah. Okay, so, so people don't know, if we're, aren't from LA. Uh, Silver Lake is basically the capital of Hipsterville. Yeah. In, <laughs> in, in, in Curly Los mustaches, yes. cool so, smoke. I don't know what they're finding under the Silver Lake. Is it, is it gonna be, bread. yeah, they're yeah. gonna find mustaches. Mustaches and, and horn rim glasses, Some or something delicious like that. coffee, uh, yeah. intelligentsia coffee, like yeah. an entire grateful. <laughs> we must get it. Yeah. All right, what's next? According to the Hollywood Reporter, Saturday Night Live's Taron Killam will make his directorial debut on the action comedy Why We're Killing Gunther with Arnold Schwarzenegger tapped to headline. Schwarzenegger will star alongside Colby Smulders and Taron Killam in a plot revolving around a group of eccentric international assassins who become fed up with Gunther, the world's greatest hitman, who also happens to be an arrogant show-off, and decide to kill him. Their master plan, however, quickly turns into a series of embarrassing encounters as Gunther always appears one step ahead. A June start date is being eyed for the film, which has yet to secure a release date. Christian, buy or sell Arnold's new movie, movie Why We're Killing Gunther. <laughs> <laughs> Had to pull it out. I'm gonna go ahead and buy it. Uh, it is, it is, it's a big buy for me. I love the sound of this movie, and I want to see Arnold come back to this kind of true lies thing but as you know he's going to be able to play this arrogant kind of guy and to see this group try to take him down oh i really hoped this is a great movie because it could be amazing please 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 i buy this one of the biggest buys because i want to see arnold just be a complete totally. jerk off i can't wait john what do you think I buy on one giant condition because mm -hmm. i don't want us to take this for granted that arnold is gunther Yes. As yeah. long as the when you're reading that description, as long as Arnold is Gunther yeah. and not one of the bumbling guys oh, trying to Gunther. go off, yeah. Yeah. then then absolutely this could be absolutely hilarious. You're playing to say, look, actually, since he stopped being the governor, mm -hmm. I have actually really enjoyed Arnold's resurgence, even though his films have not exactly been blown with boxes. I think he's done a couple of films that have been really good. That little zombie one that he Maggie, did, man, was Maggie, great. Was good, Maggie, the one yeah. where he's the local sheriff and Last the Stand, I think. Yeah. Last Stand. Yeah, I thought that like was that. really great, yeah. but it has not hit with the box office. This to me sounds a little bit like, follow me here, Tom Cruise's spot in Tropic Thunder. Because remember, Tom Cruise did that little comedic take yeah. in Tropic Thunder, totally revitalized his career, and I think something like this could potentially do that for Arnold as well. Yeah, definitely. Yep. So, While well, you're trying to kill me here, I want to hear you do it. Well, I can't just go to do it at the top of my lungs. I mean, it depends on if somebody's asking for it. If someone's like, hey, listen, I'm going to be Gunter. It's like, of course, he tried to get me. They can't get me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well I 100% buy Arnold as Gunther. I mean, I love him in the stupid comedies that he was in in the 80s, and I'm happy to see him returning to hopefully this is a stupid comedy. I mean, that's what I want. I would love nothing more than just this, this to be like, and a bunch of idiot assassins. That's kind of what they explain. They're like, we're going to take this guy out. He's doing, he's too good or whatever. So I want to see them try to kill Gunther, the whole movie. I, yeah, I can't wait. Be. Dennis? Yeah, I buy it as well. As long as we get Arnold from Kindergarten Cop and True Lies yeah. the, the, instead of a jingle all the way, Arnold. Um, I, <laughs> Last action hero, Arnold. Let's get yeah, that Yeah, I mean, because he's got some comedic chops. And, and I, I think the cast that they've got around him, like Colby Smulders, yes. he's great. Randall Park, who's in Fresh Off the Boat, and yeah. he was in the interview. I think those are nice, like, 
pieces of the puzzle. And like you said, he's got to play Gunther. The other interesting thing is Taron Killam doing his dire directorial yeah. debut. Yeah, I if love you guys that. know him from Saturday Night Live, I didn't know he was actually interested in directing it at all. So, uh, and, and he put his wife in there as well, oh, too. Really? Yeah, 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 Kobe Smolders. And so if you, if you have you can see him kind of pitching he's a funny dude like when you see his kind of his mind work and to be able to get and go out and get arnold i bet you this was all based around arnold the fact Probably. That so and the, that you got to go after him first and once they did and arnold needs like we were talking about but even though those movies because i agree with you I, I thought he last stand i think that it just came out at the wrong time yeah because mm -hmm. what uh, Stallone did smartly was go after Rambo and Rocky right away to get people remembering him as where Arnold came back with the last stand people were like what the hell is that she came back with Terminator even though the last one right. was not that great did Oh, yeah. sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. But I was just going to say, so what I think that this could do was to is to kind of push him forward. I think this is the kind of movie he needs. Did you say that uh, that Colby Smulders is Taron Killam's wife? Yeah. Wow, man. You got Jason Sudeikis, Olivia Wilde, Taron Killam, and Colby Smulders. We wife need to, we, I'm pretty sure it's we, we need to get on Saturday Night Live. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, that funny guys, need? That's man. the underlying message here. Oh, um, okay. What's next? In a report from Deadline, Daisy Ridley and Naomi Watts are in final negotiations to star in Ophelia, a reimagining of the Shakespeare classic Hamlet as told through the eyes of the play's famously doomed heroine. The project is based on the award-winning novel by Lisa Klein that has Claire McCarthy directing from a script by Madman writer Semi Chalas. The story will be set in the 14th century but spoken in a contemporary voice, which will put Ophelia center stage. A release date has not been set. John Byersell, a reimagined Hamlet starring Daisy Ridley and Naomi Watts. Massive, massive buy. Ridley, uh, Daisy in her past has, has been a real uh, aficionado of Shakespeare herself, so to see her step up and do this, but I mean, I cannot get away from Naomi Watts. I mean, Naomi Watts, I think 15, 20 years from now, she's gonna be one of those people that we went, you know, in her day, we didn't appreciate how good she was. Like, cause she never broke through to that super A-list status, but her talent is up there. Whether you're looking at Birdman, 21 mm. Grams, Eastern Promises, she was, everybody talks about the male lead in that movie. She was incredible in that movie. Mulholland Drive, whatever. Mm -hmm. See these two together, this established great, and how good looking is Naomi Watts, 47 years old, mm -hmm. as beautiful as she's ever been, and play her off one of the newest stars in Hollywood, the Daisy Ridley. I think it's gonna be a really nice match. I buy this. I'm gonna buy it as well it, although it makes me nervous that daisy really is going to burn herself out because she's another one she's just up for everything right now trying to do everything which i think is a smart move because you want to get away from just being pigeonholed as ray mm -hmm. you want to show yeah. what you can do we saw from the force awakens that she's got the acting chops and she wants to do more so a movie like this going up against someone like nomi watts is a great move for her i'm just worried that she's going to do too much mm -hmm. she's got a lot of movies coming out I, we assume she's going to be through the entire trilogy of between seven eight and nine so there's a lot I just hope she doesn't do too much Dennis what do you think yeah, I buy it as well and and also for the same reason like she does need to get not get away from being Rey in Star Wars but also define herself as yeah. something other than that as well because you had Mark Hamill everyone just thought of him as Luke Skywalker you had Carrie Fisher only Princess Leia obviously Harrison Ford was able to get away from that and yeah she's just up for a lot of stuff she's in that new J.J. Abrams yeah, movie right. as well uh, it's an interesting take to going with uh, Ophelia and then they're gonna still set it in the what the 14th, 14th century, century but yeah. they're taking out the old Sh English yeah yes. Shakespeare's dialogue which is what he's kind of really known for right. so that's going to be interesting yeah, yeah as long yeah. as they you know I when I heard that uh, I instantly thought of Harvey Keitel from Last Temptation of Christ like, Jesus what's going on hey oh <laughs> Jesus what a good come on let's hang out for a minute oh you, you know got like, bread. hey <laughs> hey he yeah, had this a super New York accent which was fun I, I love the Last Temptation of Christ so I'm cool with it. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure there's going to be, it's not like they're going to be talking in like slang of the modern age. I think they're just going to make it a little simpler than, you know, Shakespeare. Come back here, ye old egg. You know, <laughs> I have, we'll have words with thee. Someone chasing yeah. it down a hill. You know, I'm not to rip on Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare. <clears throat> not every day though. But um, anyway, I, yeah, I, to I totally buy this too. Daisy Ridley, you know, remember Mark Hamill was in like Corvette Summer after Star Wars. So you have to pick your roles. Yeah. Right, and, and like Giver. Yeah, really do that person. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, it's yeah, like yeah. you know, so you know, you're in a gigantic super blockbuster. Everyone's gonna know her as Ray forever for the rest of her life. 
So as as she's doing these other roles that help break her out as Daisy Ridley and not Ray, she becomes an actress as opposed to a character. So and I think it's really important. I love Naomi Watts too, so I can't wait to see this film. Yeah, you know, the other thing is too, she has something that most actors and actresses don't have, um, is that we don't know her from anything else because like a lot of these, even when like if someone pops from a big movie, mm -hmm. they go back and watch older movies that these people had after right, right, so right. Small, she doesn't have that. No. She has none of that. So she can she's able to even though yeah, you're right, like she's gonna be Ray forever, but she's gonna be able to prove herself through because there's not some well, she's just been doing that same kind of Ray role for her whole career. Mm. That's right. all she's got. Like the I mean she's done smaller things. Like she's when I talked to her, she I guess the longest she'd ever spent on a set was like two weeks. <laughs> and they, now, you know, she's she's really going after it. So good How for old her. is she though? She's like super twenty one, yeah, so like yeah, yeah. And then with the Naomi Watts, yeah, there was that point where she almost broke through with she had what the ring and then she did uh, King Kong, but right. I guess because King Kong didn't really. Yeah, she, two Academy Award nominations, but just never. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the King Kong might have actually hurt her yeah. a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now it is time for opening this week, brought to you by our <laughs> friends over at AMC Theaters. Natasha, what is coming out this week? Well, a little movie called Captain America Civil War. Political pressure mounts to install a system of accountability when the actions of the Avengers lead to collateral damage. The new status quo deeply divides members of the team. Captain America Chris Evans believes superheroes should remain free to defend humanity without government interference. Iron Man, played by Robert Downey Jr., sharply disagrees and supports oversight. As the debate escalates into an all-out feud, Black Widow, played by Scarlett Johansson, and Hawkeye Jeremy Renner, must pick a side. All right, so we realized people, the studios, were pretty smart this week. Yeah. Stay away yeah. from Civil War. Civil War is really the only big movie opening this week. If you want to go and see it, you should because it's gonna. It's an event. It is. We've talked about it here on our. We're doing our spoiler reviews coming out on Friday. Tomorrow. It's yeah. coming out tomorrow. We uh, we act, our regular review is up too. We have all seen. It. We've all been raving about it. This is a movie that you need to see in the theater, and I think that you should go see this movie even if you're not a fan of superhero movies. It is that kind of movie. It is a big kind of budget action movie, but it is tied in with a lot of emotion. The Russo brothers are two directors that you should know their names. They're going to have a very long career in the feature film world now after this, so this is a movie I think you absolutely should see. John, do you agree with me? Well, it's look, every year we go into each new cinematic year with, four or five films that are the must we gotta see these this year right. and obviously for us captain america civil war was one of those films right. and it absolutely deserves its spot i have look all film is subjective not not every movie's gonna work for everybody absolutely but this is one of those films where i watch it, i'm like i just don't know how you don't walk out loving this movie like maybe don't love it but i just i have a hard time imagining how anybody's gonna walk out of this film not at least liking it. So I, I, absolutely, invest your time. Go to see Captain America Civil War this week at your local AMC theater. I really believe you're going to have a very good time. Dennis? Yeah, I mean, we talked about it on Tuesday. It, it, it's one of those you have to see in the theater because it is a spectacle. It is entertaining, the sound, and you want to get the audience reaction. Also, don't forget to check out, uh, we did an interview with the Russo brothers here yeah. on this channel, and then I know... Christian, you guys did for Schmoes, and then John, you guys have an interview with them for yeah, uh, the, Film the HQ? Yeah, Russo's are our first guest on our first for Film HQ show. Yeah, That yep. is awesome. Schnapp, what do you think? Yeah, and Film HQ you can watch on Saturday, this Saturday. So remember to subscribe to Comic-Con <laughs> HQ. Um, <laughs> It's a little, little, you know, little getting, plug yeah, plug. Little, hey, we're paid off, right, guys? Remember, <laughs> Marvel pays us, whatever. Um, Civil War, fantastic film. Once again, every time I mention Civil War, I get $17,000 direct from Mickey Mouse. He comes to my house and delivers it in quarters. Hey, here you um, go. Here's your check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Mickey, he's here. here um, saw Civil War twice. I cannot wait to see it a third time with everyone on the, on the planet Earth because it's such a fantastic film. Just wait till you see it. I'm seeing it again tonight in yeah, the prime. Nice. I'm a big fan of the shit rats. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, now it is time for you guys to Send in your emails. You guys have been sending in your emails at collidervideo at gmail.com. And we've been going over them. Now, before we get to those questions, also, Natasha Martinez will be fielding the live Twitter questions. Go ahead. Anything you want to ask in regards to movies behind the scenes, go ahead and do it. She'll be fielding them and asking them. But first, it's mailbag. What are they asking? 
SFC1940 writes, Dear Collider Crew, big fan. Tons of properties have had remakes, sequels, and trilogies. Few have successfully ventured beyond to become a film franchise. With a recent push from movie studios to develop a cinematic universe for their franchises, what franchise would you like to see develop into a cinematic universe, including stories beyond the main characters? There are two I would like to see. Give me a Bond story about a young secret agent on their way to becoming double-O agent done in the vein of Bourne and Mission Impossible, and take my money now for a Mo Green Godfather epic hmm. about the early days of Vegas. I love those suggestions. I think though we tried with Bourne though it didn't uh, work too great. But I think that uh, what I I'd actually I want to see how the second Kingsman does, and then I like to see some more Kingsman hmm. stories because I think you can do a lot more depending on who the recruits are and and where they might go. That might be interesting. But John, what do you think? Uh, for the last couple of years, look. First of all, sometimes. Side characters are side characters for a reason. They're right. great for serving their purpose there, and they're great in it. That doesn't mean you have to explore it. This is 40 is a great example of that because he took the two side characters from Knocked Up who were really good in Knocked Up, tried to right. build a whole movie around them, didn't quite work. But for the last couple of years, I have been all about, I want a movie about Ian McShane and the Continental from John Wick. I yeah. th I think there is so much mythology, and even John uh, Leguizamo's character mm -hmm. in that. like Because once he goes... It was John Wick and hangs up the phone. We don't really see him again in the right. movie. I like to see the background of these guys, the mythology you can go into with the Continental. That is the one I've been really wanting to see. Uh, what do you think, Schnapp? You know, the DC has such a great um, kind of uh, the spooky empire of all their characters. You, you have the Phantom Stranger, you have Swamp Thing, you have the Demon, you have Dead Man. I would love to see them kind of branch off. I know they tried doing Sandman. The DC and, Dark kind of stuff. Yeah, d but I don't want to see Justice League Dark. I think that's the wrong way to go. I think j going, you know, break off. I know they don't have Vertigo anymore, but break off and let all these characters reside in a universe that doesn't have Batman. I think it makes them stronger, and that's what I'd love to see. Or, you know, go on the flip side, I'd like to see them kind of like make some kind of weird Flash Gordon Buck Rogers combino universe and just have like <laughs> a super weird like 1930s meets 2000 uh, series, you know. Dennis? Uh, I would go with the Terminator franchise. Hmm. I would do a story set in the future when they're fighting the Terminators and Skynet and have it not related to Kyle Reese or John Connor, but more a soldier that's just part of the resistance hmm. fighting them and, and developing that kind of universe. That could be interesting. Yeah. All right. What's next? Nick Dahl writes, hey all, thanks for bringing a little bit more excitement to my days at work with your movie talk show. With Iron Man confirmed to appear in Spider-Man's solo movie, is it possible for Marvel to make a solo superhero movie now without cameos slash help from other superheroes? I know they can, but will they? They have such a large roster of heroes, it's hard to imagine that a superhero wouldn't receive any help from another hero, especially if their villain is threatening mass destruction. The excuse of everyone is everyone else is busy can't go on for long since there are so many now. Thanks and keep up the great work. No, it's a great question because that was always the criticism for a very long time and whether it be Iron Man 3 or whatever movie it was, like, where is everybody? And right. now I think they were kind of listening to that and the story actually started to call for more of the heroes to be involved. I do think we're going to have standalone movies to where they don't show up, even though I was about to say, well, Ant-Man did it, and then they had Falcon come in. So it's uh, they don't have to do it. And I think for right now where we are in this phase that they want to do it and it is serving the story. But I think eventually, yes, we'll go back to the fact that they're not going to have superheroes in every single movie for cameos especially after all the events happen in Infinity War 1 and 2 it'll kind of slow down a little bit and they won't be called on maybe the stakes will be a little lower than they were because the stakes are going to be so high in Infinity 1 and 2 they have to come down but Dennis what do you think? I think the lore of having those cameos is, is great. Like you mentioned, even Ant-Man had a cameo by Falcon. Maybe right. Doctor Strange will exist on its own without any cameos. Uh, I think they can do it with what you're talking about, is to scale down the stakes. Right. If you make it more personal, make it smaller, then you can say, okay, there's no reason why Spider-Man or Captain America or whoever has to be there because it's not end-of-the-world end type of stakes, and it's more, more something like with Ant-Man. He was just dealing with that one guy. John? 
I think this part of this is going to be the responsibility of the audience to just know that, look, you can't bring, not every movie with superheroes has to have every superhero. And we even talked about that like five years ago, uh, on, on like in the early days of the show, about how the one kind of drawback about bringing all of these heroes and having one big shared universe is that eventually the audience is going to cry right. whenever you try to do a solo, interesting standalone movie. Why didn't Superman show up? Why didn't Iron Man show up? And, you know, they've come up with different reasons throughout the films. Like, I, I still kind of count Ant-Man as totally a solo film because Falcon's appearance in that was very much just a cameo as a side note sort of thing. It wasn't involving the character. Now, they came up with their own individual reason because you had Scott go, I think the first thing we need to do is call the Avengers. And then you had Michael Douglas go, give a reason why, no, I don't want them involved because of this. And going to your point, one of the things that did was so great about Ant-Man was they did bring down the scale a bit. Because mm -hmm. it was really at its core, it wasn't about Ant-Man trying to save the world, even yeah. though that was a little bit on the table. It's more about him trying to save his family. Right. And really trying to save his daughter and save you know the, the new love of his life and all that kind of stuff. So I do believe you can do them. You're right though, because of the era that we live in, each film that does try to be more or less standalone is going to have to come up with their own built-in reason why this one is more of a standalone than anything else. But I think they can do it. Guardians of the Galaxy did it. Their reason, they were out in space. Sure, Ant-Man right, right. did it. They kept it short. So I think they can do it. It's just going to be challenging for them to do and it. And I think the rumor with Guardians was that at one point, Tony Stark was supposed to, was either going to be in the post credit scene or something to do where he's interacting with them and they did actually scale back on that. So, uh, Schnapp, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't mind it. I mean, if you read the comics, if you read comics in the Marvel world, there's guest appearances all the time in all sure. the different comic books. And that was kind of what's fun about the fabric of having something called the Marvel Cinematic Universe is that you can have guest appearances like the Falcon in Ant-Man, but it's still Ant-Man's movie. I mean, Thor Dark World, I don't think there were any uh, guest appearances. I can't remember in Iron Man 3. I, didn't, I don't remember any guest appearances. But uh, moving forward, are there going to be guest appearances? Sure, and I think it's great. I mean, will there be guest appearances in Captain Marvel? Probably because they're going to tie her... Or origin in with the Kree and the Guardians are probably someone from the Guardians right. is going to be in there someone from the Marvel Cinematic Universe will be there to help ground that brand new character into the Marvel Cinematic Universe they introduced Black Panther and Spider-Man in Civil War and now with these characters moving forward I'm sure like we've heard Robert Downey Jr. is going to be in Spider-Man right. and I'm sure there's maybe someone else will be in Black Panther but that just makes sense I don't think they'll take you know I don't think every movie will be like Thor and the Hulk and this it's not gonna be like buddy movies for the you know for the next six seven mm -hmm. years but I don't mind it at all if like there are little guest appearances okay now it is time for Twitter questions you guys have been tweeting into Collider video as well as Natasha she's been going through them Natasha what's up first Lover of Comics 94 asks, <laughs> who do you think has the biggest film career ahead of them? Alicia Vikander, Brie Larson, Daisy Ridley, Ooh. or Emily Blunt? Great Ooh. choices. I mean, it, but just because I just, I think it's Emily Blunt's like 34. 35. She's already had a lot of she's amazing She's already, already had yeah. legit great yeah, career. She's got a great career. Yeah, I'm going to so. take her out of yeah, the like equation. Remove her. So out of the, I mean, you got Daisy Ridley. <sighs> Alicia, Alicia Vikander, Vikander is also, she's moving, she's a lot She's more forward in her career than Daisy Ridley. And who is the Brie third? Larson. Brie Larson. Brie Larson. They're all, they're Brie all Larson. making Academy Awards. So who's got the prize? I'm going to go Alicia Vikander. Me too. Yeah, I, me I too. just feel like she's got, again, sports analogy. I feel like you're just looking at her and you're thinking she's got just so much upside. Right. And I just feel with her, we are still just scratching the surface of mm -hmm. what she can do. Look, the whole thing caught me off guard with uh, Tomb Raider. Sure, yeah. But and I never even thought of it. Once that name came out, I was like, what the, uh, why did we not think of it's that perfect. before? It's perfect. And I think now we're going to see, now you're seeing her run the gamut from, from dramatic to action and, and genre stuff. I, look, Daisy Ridley is going to be just fine. Yeah. Brie Larson is already awesome. Right. But if you're asking which one, I, I got to go with uh, Alicia Vikander. I mean, you both, you're going to put two Oscar winners against each other with, yeah. with Vikander and, and um, Brie, Larson. Brie Larson. So the two of them, they're both going to be around for a very long time. Yeah. They both have tremendous acting chops, but I think Alicia Vikander, a little, I don't Brie Larson could change this. But I think right now, Vikander has a little more range. I agree. Uh, so yeah. we'll see what happens. What, do you think the same? Yeah, I mean, I, I can't remember what rumor it was, like Brie Larson as Captain Marvel. I remember hearing that a couple weeks ago. I was like, that, that wouldn't be bad. I think she's a great <laughs> actress. Great. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with actresses or actors having fun. I mean, that's a fun role. Imagine, oh, everyone wants to be a superhero. Do that. And then, I mean, look at uh, Vikander. She, that's how she won the Oscar. Yeah. She's in The Danish Girl. Or uh, Larson is in Room. And what was the film? 
long before Short Term Twelve. Yeah. I mean. I mean, she's an incredible actress. Really so, is. I mean, that's the the fun of having these actors and actresses who are like top notch. And then we're like talking about Russell Crowe playing Doctor Jekyll. It's like that's fun when you have someone who's a really, really good actor or actress playing a fun role like that. So, mm -hmm. you know, I I would have to edge out Brie Larson just by a little bit with Alicia Vikander just because of the roles that Vikander's already had right. running the gamut from Ex Machina to the Danish Girl to now Tomb Raider. So, but you wouldn't know. you say though by that argument though that she's going to have the more the, the better career, right? Alicia will, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. I thought you said Brie Larson. No, I'm just right. edging Alicia. Brie just gets oh, edged out. And to, and to your point earlier with Daisy really we don't have that body of work to right, look right. at and go, okay, now we can see. And with Brie Larson right now, we haven't seen her in any of like the big budget type of films. Mm -hmm. We've seen. I think she's going to be Captain Marvel. I mean, maybe, but yeah. no, well, right as of right now, Alicia Vikander, she, even though the movie wasn't like a big blockbuster, she wasn't even in The Man from Uncle. Right, you yeah. know, oh, obviously she was so tough. good in yeah, that. Yeah, she was fantastic in that. And, and then Tomb Raider coming up now. Yeah. So and, and, and Bourne. She's in Jason Bourne. Jason right. Bourne. So, so I feel like her career choices right now is heading yeah. towards that, like, okay, I'm going to be a movie star. Totally. And Brie um, Larson is in Skull Island with Hiddleston. She is. That's yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. That rotating cast in, in, in that movie yeah, you keep today adding and dropping <laughs> yeah, actors true. left and right. Right. All right. What's next? Joey Current asks, why does Pacific Rim have so much appeal, but Power Rangers with giant robots fighting monsters in every episode doesn't? Well, I think the first thing is they probably director and stuff too. What Del Toro is so respected on the uh, well, the geek culture, just the filmmaker in general, that when he was selling that particular movie, also the tone very different for <laughs> and generations when you come into the '90s with the uh, Power Rangers was sold as a campy kind of kids show, and and I think that it's just, it, as where Pacific Rim is sold as a serious monsters versus it was fun obviously, but mm -hmm. monsters versus robots. So that's what. I think, and we haven't seen yet a Pacific or not a Pacific a Power Rangers with like fantastic CG right, robots. Right. Fi we've just seen the people in the costumes, you know, running around. Where Pacific Rim, we've seen like really excellent, in my opinion, the best giant robots we've ever seen on screen before. Right. So that's that's my opinion. To, yeah. to me, it's kind of like asking, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why do we take The Departed so seriously, but we don't give enough credit to stop or my mom will shoot? <laughs> I mean, they're both about cops trying to fight the bad guys and save their loved ones, right? right. I mean, like, yeah, there's a, there's a premise similarity. There's definitely a clear <coughs> premise similarity there in, in, in a way, but they're so radically different things and look and once again let's let's see how we take mm. the new power rangers thing like right now we just got the, the images of the suits let's see what happens when the trailer drops because you never know like maybe that type of excitement will get generated we just don't know yet yeah it's it's impossible to uh, com put them together because pacific rim came out already and right. we've seen it and, and it had the toro behind right, it at the right. time too right. but i mean even if you took his name out of it and you just saw that movie those battles between the kaiju and the ro giant robots were incredible and that's what the whole reason you went and saw that movie yeah. was you wanted to see giant monsters fight giant robots and with power rangers it's not really that it's like you know they they fight monsters but First of all, I got to see the monsters because I've seen the Power Rangers monsters from television. And, you know, <laughs> give me a break. So I need to see what they're doing. How are they updating that? So. Yeah, I think that could be. You make a good point though too. Once we see like a trailer and stuff too, the trailer for this movie with the costumes that we just saw today, um, if that trailer comes out and it's similar the mm -hmm. way that it looks like, and I don't mean in tone because it's not going to be right. in tone, but as far as the, gra the the special effects and the way we see these monsters, I think that it could bring in that same audience that was, had a lot of fun with Pacific Rim. Mm -hmm. Totally. Uh, okay, what's next? Christopher S. Brown asks, young American actors seem to be losing roles to English, Australian, or other foreign actors. Why? Training, talent, or both? Oh, we've talked about this a couple times, and I, I will go to the same answer. It's just that the, it's it's the very it's the same reason why I think European heavyweights in boxing are better than American heavyweights is the training. It's the focus. Um, there, I think that the acting they're classically trained a lot of these actors that you see now coming over it's just a different style is where I think there's a lot of emphasis on the movie star over here in America as where it's still about not that not that we don't have great American actors here we, we certainly do but I think that the craft is a little bit more explored in the olden in olden ways in uh, in Europe but that's that's the way I look at it Schnapp. 
Yeah, it feels that way. I mean, I think a lot of Americans are like, I want to be a movie star. I want to be a reality star. Isn't mm -hmm. it fun to just be an actor because you don't have to do anything? Whereas in the real cat, when you get all these actors that we see are constantly cast in leading roles are either English or Australian. It's because they went to school, they trained, <laughs> they can memorize more than one sentence. They can actually memorize an entire script and be ready to do it, especially in theater where you have to repeat the same lines day in, day out, maybe twice every day. That's a skill set that you know they you want to get if you're an american actor or actress coming up that's something you want to be able to do so i think that's why the english and the australians have edged us out a little bit yeah. well i'm look it's not it's not i don't want us to paint in too broad of a, a brush here because there are american actors canadian north american actors canadian mm -hmm. actors as well who work very hard sure. from a very young age to to accomplish and get their craft to the level that they do but to your point, Christian, you look at a guy like Tom Hiddleston, right? Mm -hmm. Where just sit down with Tom, this is a true thing, sit down with Tom Hiddleston, throw him a Shakespeare title, an act, and uh, give, him, give him a verse, right? And he'll just, boom, he'll recite it to you just like that word for word because his whole life has been dedicated to that. And a lot of the actors that we see coming out of Europe that's the type of environment that they seem to be creating over there. If you want to get into acting, you start young, you train and you train and you train and you train. And in North America, there are actors who do that and not enough of them get rewarded, but it doesn't seem to be as much of an emphasis as right. one of the two you guys just said, it's the movie star mentality. Yes. Yeah. Like there's that here, whereas over there, no, it's a job and you work at it and we're kind of seeing it play. And let's not overemphasize this either. Lots of American actors getting lots of roles. Let's not pretend like they're not. But yeah, it is becoming a little more obvious. Dennis? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot, same thing. But it's it's more not just movie star focused. It is fame focused. Yeah, People, celebrity focused. Yeah, it's Kardashian lot, baby. Yeah, a lot of the stuff, <laughs> you know, and not to say, like you said, there are plenty of fantastic American actors, Canadian actors that are, are working hard. But there is something in the culture that is focused on, okay, I just want to be famous. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't want to be a good actor. You you're concerned on being famous. They're chasing and, the star. Yeah. yeah, right. Tom Holland, he's British. So is uh, Henry Cavill. A lot so, of these. I mean, Christian Bale. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's take uh, three more. Mujaba Ahmed asks, which movie do you think will be the surprise of the summer, and why? Oh, I have to think about. It. I mean, I think BFG has a chance if it's really good, um, because you got Spielberg behind it. But uh, I'd have to. I thought you were saying it. the Shallows was going to be the surprise. <laughs> this summer. Certainly not. We have a, we had a little bet going around the studio, and everybody who was making their bold claims was uh, was running away from those bets. I tried right. to bet people on it, what they thought, and then they saw what was coming up against. They're so like, okay, we may not. Um, you always get the surprise hits of the summer, and and even movies that are supposed to do well mm. sometimes far exceed let me look at jurassic world last year who the hell thought that would be the number one movie so i don't know that right now i'm gonna guess and say bfg what do you think john man because when you say surprise you gotta you gotta then stick your answers to things that yeah maybe people don't think that'll do so well i'm gonna go with never stop never stopping uh it's, it's a film that i'm really i've been looking forward to i haven't been thrilled with the trailers mm -hmm. haven't but i'm still i love lonely island i love the comedy that these mm -hmm. guys do that one andy samberg so hbo pop star never oh, okay. stop never stopping what okay. um what did i say you just said the end of it you oh yeah sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. pop star sure never stop never stopping yeah. that little hbo one he just did about the tennis being the tennis pro uh, that was so twisted and hilarious. I just laughed so much about that. Uh, the, the daily shower orgies. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to go with uh, Popstar. Okay. Yep. Uh, surprise hit. I'm going to go with, we were talking about that earlier, The Purge. I think the third one is called Anarchy. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Um, just because it's got, so, the first two have had such a, a, a surprise hit and, and level of, uh, of box office that they are not only making a third one, but now everyone who wants to see those Purge films, it's available on all the streaming services. So it's kind of got a built-in audience. So I think it's probably going to make a lot more money than people are expecting it to. It's a, the Purge election year, I think. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anarchy yes. was the last Anarchy was the second. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Uh, possibly, maybe the founder. They just moved it up oh, from, yeah. from November to August. Mm. And it's in a time where there's not going to be that much competition. And <clears throat> it, remember one of the complaints? I, I, I loved oh, right. Steve, Steve Jobs, the movie. But one of the complaints, they said they they should have made one of the, the, the tech demos be like something more relevant to today, Correct. which is like the iPhone, iPhone. Right. or something like that, where McDonald's, it's pretty relevant. It's the biggest fast food chain in the world. Right. Everyone knows McDonald's. Everyone's eaten at McDonald's. So I think that part of it is not going to happen. All right. What's next? 
Okay, Massive Tards asks, if, <laughs> if you could veto any movie from being rebooted, remade, or sequeled from Hollywood, what would it be? Back to the Future and Rocky. Mm. I'd be okay with Back to the Future. Rebooted? Uh, yeah. I, I, continued I do, maybe, but not, not rebooted. I, 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 could, uh, I, could, I could see that. It might turn out horrible, but yeah. I think that's, that's a property that could really benefit from... Uh, modern technology, mm. uh, they'd probably blow it, but well, I think it'd be interesting. Why not just continue it? Like someone finds the DeLorean years later. Uh, I don't know. I think create, creatively, you're tied a little bit with what you can do. But I, look, I'm not. I'm not campaigning for I know Back to the Future yeah, thing. I Rocky, I think you're absolutely right, though. I mean, because that's that is a timeless story about right. what it is. There's really nothing to do new to it. Although we do see the themes of Rocky reintroduced in a lot of different movies all the time, not least of which was Creed. Right. Um, so I agree with uh, I agree with Rocky. Dennis? Uh, probably either Godfather or Lawrence of Arabia. I just I just can't see. I, I think they made it like a Lawrence of Arabia 2 or something like really? that. Like set in, Did uh, they? Yeah, I think it Did was. I know that. Uh, no, no one was, ever talks like, about that TV, one. It was yeah. a TV movie or something oh, like okay. that. But uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to see either one of those made. I remade because I don't. I don't think you can capture the magic from either yeah. film. Right. Yep. You know, I was just thinking about it, like, you know, you, people can always remake things. Like, I was thinking about Escape from New York and, and how much I love that film. Mm -hmm. And that it's, that if you had, if you did remake it, it would still have to be set in 1997. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. you'd have to have those categories, because it was made before 1997, but that's like, in the future, 1997, New York will be a, you know, prison is like, it's goofy. So if you did it, you'd have to keep that goofiness to it. Um, yeah, I'll stick with Escape from New York. I'd like to not see that remade. All right. Uh, last one. Okay. Chris Clark asks, what, in your opinion, is the most tense scene in any movie? Tense scene? Tense oh, scene. Man. Okay. I don't know if this is the most, but I was just talking to a friend of mine about this the other day. The, the first part, the first half of The Descent, when mm. they're just, this is before any of the, the, the creatures and supernatural stuff show up. It's about these women who just go on an adventure every year, and this year they're going cave diving. And I thought I was gonna pass out from stress and just like freak out, what the hell are they doing? Just from them, the claustrophobia in that movie, they're trying to drag their bodies through these little crevices a mile underground insanity it's crazy yeah they're just I, like wiggling through like little crevices it's like i've never been does so that, stressed yeah, yeah. It's a, you're right that is such I, I love that movie it's neil marshall yes a fantastic filmmaker fantastic film if you've never seen the descent john is completely 100 percent right with the levels of tension before any of the spooky shit happens yeah. it's yeah, actually it's before just, anything <laughs> weird happens you're like why are these women so nuts you know, get out of there myself, stop it yeah. what are you doing stop <laughs> yeah i'm freaking out I, see i would have to go with um, the opening scene in *Inglorious Bastards*. Mm. Like, oh, when, they, very when, good. When yeah, they good one. That just that that being in German first, and then switching over to English, and just the fact that everything happening, you know, as an audience, what's going on in that? And is he gonna kill him? Does he know? Mm. Everything about it, and just the sweat down the dude's head. I mean, it, it was just painted perfectly. That movie, I remember just being on like the edge of my seat, like, ah, uh, like it, it, he Tarantino got out of you exactly what he was aiming for. Like yeah, I love that sequence. Yeah, it's yeah. actually one of the best opening scenes I've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, another Tarantino one is in Pulp Fiction with Uma Thurman and the overdose and sure. the adrenaline sure. scene. Mm. That's like everyone in the theater was just like. Yeah. I, I heard like someone had a heart attack watching that. Wow. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I would say 127 hours. I remember, you know, his arm is stuck oh, in that. Yeah. And then that one sequence where he's like sawing through and he hits that one little tendon and then all the sound drops out. Oh, man. Uh, I just, you know, I would say 101 Dalmatians because you got those <laughs> cute puppies, this evil it's woman. a lot of tension. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. <laughs> or even swingers when he's making that phone call. Oh, that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's, 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 a, that's a different type that's of that's different awesome. yeah, That was so yeah. great. That, that was painful. Yeah. yeah. All right. Speaking Speaking of painful, you should watch the Schmodown tomorrow and watch what me and Ellis are going to do to Finstock and JTE. It is the team title match. If you didn't watch the regular singles title match, that's up between Riley and JTE. John Campia and John Roca will be the hosts of tomorrow's Schmodown as myself and Ellis go into battle with these two, as uh, Schnepp says, simple-minded fools. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Make sure you check it out. And if there's any other matches, we have a couple more that we can announce. Next week is El Mayambe versus Jeff Snyder from The Wrap. Then we have Mance versus Merle. Winner of that gets the uh, gets a championship bout. Then we have Roca versus Makuga. 
which is a big one. There's some heat around that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. then I will be going up against Screen Junkies, Godfather, Andy Signore. So those are a couple of matches coming up down the pipe. I'd like to thank everybody on the panel today. First, Dennis Zhang, where can I find you? You guys can find me on Twitter, at Think Hero, on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. And he made his return. We were happy to have him. He'll be on Jedi Council today. It's John Campia. Where can I find yeah, you? Yeah, well, a couple of, first of all, you can find me on my social media. simply at, uh, at John Campia. That's on Twitter and on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, the whole bit. Uh, tomorrow, you can catch me, much like Shawn Michaels. I'm going to be a fair and impartial judge, right. calling it down the middle. Everything Christian gets wrong, I will highlight for you guys. <laughs> it's going to be great. And then, of course, on Saturday, make sure you guys sign up for Comic-Con HQ, the debut of our new show, Film HQ. We hope to see you there. John, sweaty, sweaty, schnep. Where can I find you? You guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter, just at John Schnepp. I'm looking forward to watching this battle between Jim Sock and JMX or whatever the idiot's name is. Um, I hope their, you know, their stupid luck runs out tomorrow. Jim Sock, Wood Sock, whatever your name is. The mask is probably going to get taken off tomorrow. Your luck's run out. Um, and uh, you guys can find uh, find me on Collider Heroes. Check out our show. And on Film HQ with John Campia on the brand new Comic Con HQ channel. Sign up for it now. You can watch us on Saturday. Natasha Martinez, where can they find you? You guys can find me all on Instagram and Twitter at NatashaLexis underscore. And happy Cinco de Mayo, guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, Christian Harloff, Twitter and Instagram. A couple cool things happening. Obviously, I mentioned Jedi Council today. John will be there. Myself, Tiffany Smith, and John Roca will actually be on the show as well today. Best and- Bestman. And we actually just put up on the channel right now Bloodline, which is a novel that it's, it's in the new canon. It takes place six years before The Force Awakens and is highly anticipated. I got to talk to the author, Claudia Gray. I put the, we put that today on the channel. It's up there right now. So if you want to go and check that out, please go and do so. Harloff Minor. And then also, uh, you and Perry are going to do a book review. We are going to review the whole thing. Non-spoilers book review. That'll probably be up today as well. It's either going to be up before or after Jedi Council. So a lot of cool Star Wars stuff happening. Thank you guys for joining us. Thanks to John and John and Dennis and Natasha for all being part of this special episode. Hold Uh, it. Yes. Camera on me. Uh Uh-oh. Oh. (laughs) Bye-bye. Yeah. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.